So it seems that Mystical Forest has made a video reply to me. I'm going to attempt to answer his questions in a respectful manner, and um, hopefully we can uh, open up a mutually beneficial dialogue. Uh, just saw uh, this moron's video. Listen, you dumb, stupid bitch. Oh, well, so screw respectful dialogue. Yeah, well, fuck you too, Nick, you retarded pile of monkey spunk. I've taken shits more intelligent than you, you fucking inbred. Okay. Evolutionary scientists, or atheists that are scientists, whatever you want to call them, um, draw these crazy fucking conclusions from a teeny bit of evidence. A teeny bit. Now, this is going to be a recurring theme throughout this response to you, Nick, okay? Um, now, you say that scientists, evolutionary scientists, are basing their evidence, are basing their conclusions on the teeniest bit of evidence. Now, what's really amazing about you saying this, uh, I find, is that you don't know how much or how little evidence the scientists actually have. In fact, you know absolutely nothing about um, the entire field of study. So this is this is it's interesting that you would make that claim uh, with nothing to back it up. Now I'm going to try to be, because this point is so important and I'm going to be making it so often throughout this video. I'm going to try to illustrate it uh, using an example from geology. You know the layers in geology. Okay, so um, just pay attention and and watch my example. We've uncovered another rock layer of pure stupid! Try to picture uh, the creation science movement, or creationism, or anti-evolution, whatever you want to call it, um, as a series of layers, like in the Grand Canyon, like a series, like a ro one rock layer on top of another rock layer on top of another rock layer, and as you dig deeper, you're going back in time, or you're going hitting hitting new and hitting new layers as you're going along. So the first layer, the top layer. Um, would be those who invent the lies, okay? Now these would be people like oh, Henry Morris, um, Kent Hovind would be a good uh, good example of that. Um, any of the guys, you know, Ken Ham, all of those a AIG people, ICR people, who actually look through the scientific literature, looking for things they can exploit, looking for things they can take out of context, uh, things they can lie about, people who actually invent the lies in the first place in the first layer. The next layer uh, would be those who actually research the lies that the other ones have made up. These are people who who actually read creation science books, uh, read through all of the articles that are on um, Answers in Genesis website, for example. Um, people who actually study both the science to some extent as well as the uh, the stories made up by creationists. So they're, they're, they're people who make a hobby out of studying creation science. We've got a number of them on YouTube here. Now below those who actually research the uh, creationist lies um, is what I believed to have been, what I thought throughout my time as being the bottom layer. Um, these are people who don't research or study even creation science or science. It, um, but these people, they will on a point by point basis Google something or go to Answers in Genesis or uh, Institute of Creation Research website ed, or other, any other ignorant website and um, you know look up each point as they hear them so if somebody says look they found a new fossil they'll google that new fossil with creation in the name and you know and then make a video or make a reply or posting um, about that specific thing now I thought this was the bottom of the barrel because more often than not these people don't even understand their own creation materials um, but then you know what I found another layer now I had believed that this was the, the bottom layer. Um, however, uh, Nick has shown me that there's even a deeper layer than this. Now, through this is a middle layer I haven't, uh, didn't label. This would be like, you know, retarded bugs and that kind of stuff would be living in this layer here. But down below that, now this, this is where you are, Nick. This is somebody who's too stupid to even understand the creationist lies. So you repeat 
creationist claims without even understanding what they're saying, which is why you get them wrong over and over again. You can't even make the creation claims right. Um, you made a video where you said maybe a bird died on top of a lizard and that's why Archaeopteryx exists. Things like that. I mean, which there's a claim similar to that in, a, in Answers in Genesis, but you couldn't even get that one right. Um, so this is where you are. Too stupid to even understand creationist lies. And I'm going to uh, demonstrate that with the rest of your video. Boom! Oh, oh, my eyes are going to blood on my freaking skull, I swear. You see, Nick, that. That's how we all feel every single time you open your mouth, okay? Artie, for example. Artie, they found a little, you know, an ape, you know, a fucking, basically an ape skeleton. And what do they say? Or it's a fossil, I guess you can call it a fossil, whatever. They say it was half human or it walked upright because there was footsteps near the artifact. Even though they had no foot bones of the ape. Actually, they had less than half of the bones from the ape. But they draw this crazy conclusion that it walked upright. How do they know that that wasn't a human that was walking through that area? No, that's crazy. That's impossible. He had a, it had to be an ape that had human foot, feet, and could walk upright. That sounds more believable. Does it, does it sound believable to you? Oh my god, I feel like my eyes are going to pop out of my head. See, Nick, that's what I'm talking about. Right there. Okay, I, I have sent you so many comments on this issue because this is a, a claim that you've said over and over again. I've corrected you on it, no acknowledgement, and here you are using it again. I'm going to say this, and then I'll explain. I'm going to say it simple, okay? Simple so that you can understand it. All right, Artie is not the same as Lucy, okay? I want you to understand that. Now, I'm going to explain what those words mean. Okay, Artipithecus was a fossil that was recently announced. In the last few months, it was recently announced. Um, Artie had no footprints associated with it. There were no footprints associated with the Artipithecus find at all, none. You are confusing that with a fossil they call Lucy. Um, actually, you're confusing that with a creationist lie about Lucy. Um, Lucy was found 35 years ago. Okay, so understand that different fossil. Okay, the species that we that creationists call Lucy was associated with footprints. Okay, now and again. Okay, first of all. Lucy was a million years younger than Artie. Completely different species, different find, different everything, all right? So just understand that. You keep mixing these things up. All right. Now, Artie, we know that Artipithecus was a biped, okay? Not because of footprints. First of all, we have foot bones of Artipithecus. We've got very, very good foot bones of Artipithecus. Um, but what's more important is, is that we have the leg bones we have the hips, okay? We have those things that tell us that Artipithecus walked upright. We don't look at footprints and say, wow, that was upright. That's, that's, I mean, that would be terrible evidence. You would be correct if that were true. That would be awful evidence for Artipithecus as an upright animal. Um, but we don't rely on that. All right. Now, Lucy, Australopithecus afarensis. That is the skull right here. I'm not going to bring it down. Um, now, there is, this is the confusion that I'm, Lucy, the species is Australopithecus afarensis, um, was found in two different countries. Lucy was found in Ethiopia, all right? Now, Lucy's fossil had no feet. The skeleton had no feet. However, we have tons of, we have 39, at least 39 individuals, probably more by now, but thir at the time, 39 individuals of that species, including almost complete feet. All right, understand that. We had foot bones, just not associated with the individual they named, nicknamed Lucy. All right, does that make sense to you? Okay, now, the reason we know that those tracks weren't made by a person walking through is that those footprints did not look like modern human footprints. They looked 
superficially similar to modern human footprints. All right, but if you look closely, they have very, very different arrangement of toe bones. No animal, living or extinct, fits those toe bones except it fits those footprints, except for Australopithecus afarensis. Okay, you understand that? Nothing. No human could have made tracks like that. No ape could have made tracks like that. No even extinct ape man could have made those tracks except for Australopithecus afarensis. That's it. Okay? Does that make sense to you? Does that? Do you understand that? 